Mission is the passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today your attitude not your aptitude will determine your altitude a person is considered educated only when he has adopted the ability to learn and change perhaps following the same vision in today's moment we have decided to change the basic teaching learning process in this phase when we are confined to our homes and switch over to a method that is more easier for us by providing us a platform where we can share our ideas and ensure a uninterrupted teaching learning process welcome students to this new session of class 10 welcome to physics classroom now without wasting any more time we will put a little bit of focus on the picture that is flashing on your screen an electric bulb in this an electric bulb instead of showing the basic structure i have included a glossary of terms that you will come across very soon i'm reading out the words for you beginning with potential circuit switch ohm conductor watt cell coulomb electric static ampere resistance heating current charge joule volt and so on all these words certainly give you a clear indication of what exactly we are going to study next absolutely we are going to study about electricity so the very first chapter in your syllabus of class 10 is electricity electricity as we all know plays such a major role in making our lives a pleasing one it finds such a wide scale application in so many areas not only in our homes but on schools colleges hospitals industries and many such commercial establishments precisely for the reason is that it can be stored and controlled easily now if such an important form of energy does exist around us then it becomes so important for us to understand how it is produced what it is basically constituted of so just listening to this word does arise a certain intuition in our mind regarding what exactly is electricity and how it is constituted what constitutes electricity what is an electric circuit how does electricity flow in a circuit what controls the flow of electricity are some primary questions that might be arising in each one of us mind but before figuring out a, an answer for all these questions let us try and understand what basically we would be studying in this entire lesson a common a simple mind map of this chapter electricity beginning with charge following up with current potential ohm's law resistance joule's law that is heating effect of current understanding all these topics will give us a clear answer to all the questions that we have been trying to find an answer to all these questions so one by one we will study all these topics and figure out an answer to the questions so let's begin in the picture you can see the atomic structure of one of the elements which has got three type of particles inside the nucleus that is the central structure inside an atom there are two types of particles shown with the black and red color and in the out, outer orbit it has got one type of particle shown with the purple color now in total there are three type of particles you might be a bit confused as to why suddenly i have switched over from physics to chemistry because to get a clear understanding of what exactly is necessary for constituting electricity we need to go deep inside the structure of an atom an atom which is the fundamental building entity of any form of matter so inside an atom we have got three types of subatomic particles one is shown by the red color one is shown by the purple color and then the other one is shown by the black color shall we name it so the red one stands for proton the purple one stands for electron and the black one 
stands for neutron proton and electron are always equal in number proton carries positive charge electron carries negative charge neutron is neutral it carries no charge basically we have got two types of charges positive and negative now these charges are actually responsible for constituting electricity how this question will be answered a bit later but prior to that we will try and collect some information regarding struck the charges electric charge what basically is an electric charge let's answer this question i hope in your junior classes you have seen these experiments a plastic comb rubbed in hair attracts bits of paper or when a balloon is rubbed in an object and put near your hair it starts attracting your hair it makes your hair rise so basically we see that charges have this ability to exert a force on other objects so what basically is electric charge an electric charge is basically an inherent property of any object due to which it experiences or exerts a force on other now up till now we have understood that there are two types of charges positive and negative now let us understand how these two types of charges are interacting with each other now you can see that we have got two charges one is positive and the other one is also positive kept on two different positions now just see that manner in these two charges are interacting with each other the right electric charge which is positive as well as the left electric charge which is positive you can see the lines are moving away from each other this clearly shows that these two charges are not attracting rather repelling each other let's see what happens when the magnitude of these charges are increased first of all i will increase the magnitude of the right electric charge see what's happening see i am decreasing it and again increasing it now let us see if the left electric charge is increased in a similar manner the same thing is going to happen if instead of placing two positive charges we are placing two negative charges so similar charges are going to always repel each other now let us find out what happens when two oppositely charged objects are kept close to each other so now we are having a positive charge on the right hand side and a negative charge on the left hand side let's see by increasing the magnitude of the positive charge what happens you can see the lines are moving towards each other from one charge to another charge see the pattern this means that one charge is exerting uh, an influence zone on the other charge and it is an attractive one that is why the line is moving from one charge to another it is a closed line let's see what happens when the magnitude of negative charge is increased see the pattern is always a closed one the lines are not moving away they are moving towards each other so from the previous pattern as well as from this pattern we can understand that two charges are always applying a force on each other and this force the magnitude of this force is so much independent dependent on the magnitude of these charges now what type of force it is going to be whether it is going to be an attractive or repulsive one that depends on the nature of the charges but the magnitude of charge is also playing an important role in deciding the magnitude of force existing between them now is it only the magnitude of charges that is going to play an important role there is one more factor that plays a dominant role in deciding the magnitude of force and that is the distance of separation that is shown by r let's vary the value of r you 
can you understand what is happening see the lines are becoming closely spaced when the value of r is decreasing and as i go on increasing the value of r the separation is increasing this means force is inversely proportional to distance if distance increases force decreases and vice versa so force is directly proportional to the magnitude of charge and it is inversely proportional to the distance of separation so these are the two informations that we can collect from studying the patterns so now we know that when a positive charge is brought near another positive charge the force is repulsive when a negative charge is brought near another negative charge the force is again repulsive but when a positive charge is brought near a negative charge the force is attractive now next we'll study about magnitude of charge which is called elementary charge now elementary charge is basically considered one unit charge carried by one particle that is denoted by alphabet e it is equal to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb coulomb is the si unit of charge 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb is the elementary charge now it can assume a positive value when we are considering the value for charge carried by a proton and it can assume a negative value when we are considering the charge carried by an electron but usually this particular value stands for one unit charge so if suppose a question is asked as to what is the total charge carried by any particle for that we need to know the value of the number of particles present in it and then we need to multiply it with the elementary charge and that will give us the value for total charge so now let us solve one question how many particles are required for constituting one coulomb charge so in this question the value of total charge is provided and we need to find out the value of n so number of particles needs to be find out using the formula q equal to n into e total charge equal to number of particles multiplied by elementary charge we can find an answer to this question q is 1 coulomb multiplied by n into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs cancel the value of unit so now 1 is equal to n multiplied by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 so n will be equal to 1 divided by 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 so that will give you the value of 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 particles so this means for constituting one coulomb charge we need 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 particles now force between charges we have already seen in that pattern that force is either repulsive or attractive force depends on the magnitude of first charge force depends on the magnitude of second charge and force is inversely proportional to distance it is actually dependent on the square of distance now combining all these three we get an expression as force proportional to product of charges divided by square of distance as we all know that whenever we want to replace the proportionality sign with an equal to sign we need to introduce a constant so k is the constant so this is known as coulomb's law 
Coulomb's law in electrostatics where k is 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 and this is having a value of 9 into 10 to the power 9 Newton meter square per Coulomb square. So using the value from Coulomb's law we can obtain the magnitude of force existing between the charges now this force could be attractive as well as repulsive now this expression is quite similar to the expression that we obtain for newton's law of gravitation the only difference is that in case of newton's law of gravitation the force is always attractive but in case of coulomb's law of electrostatics the force may be both attractive as well as repulsive now there is a home assignment for you all an ebonite rod when rubbed with flannel acquires a negative charge of 0 0.00000004 coulomb so the charge is given 4 into 10 to the power minus 9 coulombs how many free electrons can constitute this much charge you have to find out the value of electrons that is going to constitute this much charge we have already discussed the concept on which this question is built up so i don't think this would be much of a problem to solve this question i hope each one of you are going to solve it okay so keep watching this space for next part of the lesson thank you